Hello everyone and welcome to the 0 to 10 CRM 2013 video series. My name is David Kohar and today's topic is on how to do better sales performance analysis in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013. In the demonstration today, I'm going to show you how sales forecasting is leveraged right out of the box with Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and then I'm going to show you how 0 to 10 has extended that functionality to do some deeper sales analysis. For sales forecasting, we're going to start with a high-level perspective on the pipeline, our goals, and really understand how our team is performing. We're going to be able to drill down into the pipeline itself, understand what our team has committed, and really see how our pipeline is shaped for this coming quarter. Next, we're going to look at some sales analytics that 0 to 10 has added to Microsoft Dynamics CRM. For every step of the sales cycle, we're taking a snapshot of that opportunity. That's going to allow us to do some very interesting analysis around our opportunity, our pipeline, and our sales performance. So let's get started. I'm starting here in Microsoft Dynamics CRM on one of the sales management dashboards, and I can see the sales funnel, goal progress, and even my sales pipeline by rating. Let's start off by looking at what our team is trying to sell for this given quarter. My team of Evan, Margaret, and David have a goal of selling $2.4 million for this given quarter. Now, they have already sold $800,000. I can see that here in the blue, and they're well ahead of their target here as they're only 12 days into the quarter. Also, I can see what is in their pipeline to close for this quarter already. So they have another $5.8 million of pipeline to be able to make their overall goal of $2.4 million. So they look overall very uh, healthy and on their well on their way to making the, the goal for this quarter. Next, I want to look at my sales funnel by stage. Now, because we're at the beginning of the quarter, maybe I want to look at how my reps are performing at bringing new business opportunities into the pipeline. I can look at that right here in the chart if I want to. I may want to expand that, though, and I may want to see a list of all the opportunities that are represented by the sales funnel. So I can push that out to a list view if I want. I'll expand that so we can see it here better on the screen. And I still want to use my charts here on the right-hand side, so I'm going to expand that as well. Now, if I want to look at all the deals, of course, that are in the last stage of the sales cycle, I can simply click on the chart on the right, and I'll get that list here on the left. If I want to see, perhaps, all of the deals that our sales team has rated as a commit deal or a most likely deal, I can go ahead and do that filtering and see how that actually looks on our chart as well. If I want to see within those deals how they're broken down by the last stage of the sales cycle, I can see them. And then even if I wanted to break that down further, perhaps I'm tracking the facility that we're tracking these opportunities to, I can go ahead and even filter that list even further. So this allows me at a very high level to really understand the pipeline, be able to drill down on various aspects of the pipeline, understand how our team is performing, and really get a better perspective on our sales forecast overall. Next, I want to go into some of the additional functionality that 0 to 10 has added into CRM. We're going to look at sales analysis, and we're going to look at first the revenue components of our sales analysis information. We'll begin the sales analysis overview on the revenue dashboard. Now that we're taking a snapshot of every deal at every stage in the sales cycle, we can understand some interesting things about how our sales pipeline actually performs. We can see here that on average, our deals trend upwards from qualification through to the proposal stage, but we can also see that we discount on average by about 10% to get into that last stage of the sales cycle. We can also see how our team actually performs through the sales cycle itself. We can see here that Evan actually spikes really at the beginning of the sales cycle when he's putting the opportunities in initially. In the case of Margaret, she peaks actually at the development phase. And then in the case of David, he's actually spiking at the proposal stage and then discounting to get the deals done. We can also look at a variety of other metrics. We can look at our average revenue by owner and opportunity status to see how we perform on average when we win, lose, and what our deals look like that are still in the pipeline right now. We can look at our overall average revenue by opportunity status. And of course, we can look at a variety of other metrics around our revenue performance. Next, we're going to look at the sales cycle itself. We'll begin the sales cycle analysis overview by looking at a couple of metrics that we have available to us. 
for example, I can see now how long it takes for us to go through each stage of the sales cycle on average. And I can see here that it's actually taking us 35 days to qualify our opportunities. So I might want to look at that and break that down by sales rep. So in fact, I can see that Evan is only taking 12 days, whereas David is taking 55. So that's probably a coaching opportunity for us to follow up with David around. If I want to see that across the board for each one of our reps, I can see it here on the left-hand chart. I can also drill down on the average days it's taking us to close deals by the win and loss reasons. I might want to see this by progressively how long it's taking us to go to each sales stage. Or I might want to just see the average days to close by owner and one loss reason here in a chart. And then finally, we may want to drill in and understand how long is it taking for each one of our reps to both win and to lose deals. So, of course, if we're losing deals, we want to lose early. Uh, and we can see that in this case, Evan and Margaret are doing a very good job of that. But again, David is actually hanging on to deals and working them for quite a while, even though he's losing them. So that may be causing us some sales cycle costs that we want to try to avoid. So we have another opportunity to help and uh, coach him along the way. So with that, I want to do a quick wrap up. I want to thank you all for watching the video here today. If you have any questions around how to do better sales performance in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013, please reach out to us as we'd love to help you with your CRM journey. Thanks very much for watching.